Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and we have the second sneak peek for this mutant Deadpool update, and it is quite good. According to the information we received from the last encounter with Deadpool, the mutants of Krakoa are ready to join the battle with even more power. Hell yes. We are able to find this mutant showing off his handy tricks, giggity, as he's quite the showman. Chatting Tatum. Sure enough, he is ready to claim victory in the game using his trademark weapons. Mon ami, mon chéri. I'm not. I'm, I'm Canadian, but sadly, I don't speak French. I apologize to all the French viewers. I'm. Just, I just wasn't a very smart student when it came to languages. I still am not. But anywho, there's the there's the sneak peek. There, there's actually three really cool things in this sneak peek. So we've got the card, which is obviously Gambit's calling card, literally and figuratively. Ha! Huh? And then you, as you can see, the the icon, the, the sort of, you know, the symbol that's supposed to be spades or hearts or diamonds or clubs. Thank you. Yes, I don't play cards that often. Anyways, has been replaced with the awakening crystal, which means that Gambit is going to be getting an awakening. Hopefully, he'll, he'll also be getting a uniform because if he doesn't get a uniform and he only gets an awakening, then he's going to join the likes of Sif and Heimdall and Elsa and all of the other forgotten toys, okay? So hopefully he's gonna get a new uniform. But man, Gambit is pretty sick. He is one of the most fun, he was one of the most fun characters to play two years ago. Obviously he's fallen into disuse because his power level just has not kept up, but his fifth skill, which is the one he's doing right there, is one of the most gorgeous skills in the game. Super long iframe where he just moves around, you can V-pad, he's, he's so much fun to play, even, even now. Even now with characters like Null and stuff, he's still so, so fun to play. I really hope they keep this fifth skill because it's honestly one of the most gorgeous skills in the game and it's still so much fun to play. So much fun to use that skill. So really excited personally for Gambit. I know you guys, if you've watched the channel for long enough, you remember I made so many videos about Gambit. I was in love with the character when he came out at the end of 2018. I literally probably made a dozen videos about him. Really, really enjoyed him. Your favorite friend will soon arrive to help our agents. So I'm very excited for this awakening for Gambit. And him him getting an awakening means we're going to be able to use him against Null. And we're going to be able to use him in Danger Room Extreme. So really exciting to see some new gameplay unlock for our favorite Cajun uh, mutant. I, I really think that he could make a splash in both game modes because he's got crazy burst potential already with straight flush, which is great for Danger Room Extreme. And then he's going to get an awakening skill on top of that. Imagine you get the burst damage of the awakening skill and then you cancel it into his fifth skill and he just keeps chucking cards, which is just awesome. On top of that, we know that ignore dodge is a really important stat for Null because he has super high dodge rate. Well, kinetic precision, his leadership, 50% dodge to all allies. Only Bullseye right now has that leadership to pass on in um, in Null, World Boss Legend. And to be honest, Bullseye's okay. He's not bad, but Gambit Gambit's going to be the real deal. Hopefully, Gambit's going to have a higher power level. He should have a higher power level than, Gam than um, Bullseye playing dress up as Hawkeye. So I'm pretty excited. He's got a crit damage passive. And I believe, yes, he also has a 20% chain hit. Now, this is very important because he's really good. He's, the synergy with the CTP of energy is gorgeous, right? So you can get up to 50% chain hit when you get a 30% chain hit here for a 200% proc. And then you get the 20% on his passive. On top of that, we have seen the emergence. I've seen Godzillinator's video recently, or I've, I've heard about Godzilla. I haven't seen the, the video yet, but Godzillinator, another YouTuber, uh, content creator, he's also in my alliance, really awesome dude, uh, supports the game tremendously, dropping tons of cash. He has a really stacked account card-wise, and he has been experimenting with the synergy between Pierce on your cards from Blue Stars and Chain Hit Damage. And he's come to the conclusion that, I don't want to spoil his video, but in some situations, if you have enough Pierce, the Chain Hit Damage from a CTP like an Energy or a Judgment is better than a rage so we could be seeing the resurgence of these you know lesser ctps because of pierce which is really cool because if you don't have rages but you've got ctps of, of uh, judgment or energy then the value might be as good or better and so it's very interesting and i don't think it's a coincidence that marvel future fight chose gambit knowing how well he already synergizes with chain hit i'll make a separate video about this but 
yeah, very, very exciting stuff. I want to monitor this more, obviously. I don't have any Pierce or any Crafted cards yet, but, you know, as we get closer to March, I'll, I'll keep my thumb on the pulse. Again, I'll keep my finger on the pulse to um, figure things out. So, yeah, Gambit's getting an Awakening, which is dope. I wonder who's going to be in his Awakening skill, because as we saw, you know, for Valkyrie, Sif and... That's not Valkyrie. Sif and Heimdall were in her awakening and they got their awakenings too. So whoever is with Gambit, it could be Beast, could be Rogue, you know, could be a bunch of other characters, could get their awakening as well. Personally, if you ask me, I would prefer Rogue to get a tier three. That's just me. I hope she gets a tier three, but if she gets an awakening, it's not the worst thing in the world either. But it'll be exciting to see. Now, where is this update going? You're probably scratching your heads at this point. You're like, Alex, listen, uh, you like Deadpool 30th anniversary, sure. How many times has Deadpool interacted with Gambit? Maybe a dozen times, like in the entire 30 years that he's been around? True. Yeah, you're right about that. They haven't interacted very much. So let me let me sort of put something else out there for you guys. And this was uh, suggested by people on the stream because I actually haven't read this at all yet. It's Excalibur. So Excalibur came out in 2019, I believe at the end of 2019. This is one of the sort of um, new storylines that they started after House of X and Powers of Ten finished. So you know how they make a storyline, they, they, they sort of create this new world in one of their storylines in Marvel, and then when it finishes, they will branch off into multiple paths with multiple teams, right? So they'll start a new Avengers thing, and then they'll branch off with, you know, the West Coast Avengers, they'll branch off with like the new Avengers, the teen Avengers, whatever. They'll, they'll do all the thing. So this is basically that exact thing. So Excalibur is one of the storylines that starts to involve other characters and villains and other sort of, you know, branching paths. And as you can see, Gambit's right here, brand new look for him. We got Jubilee, who's starting the game, Apocalypse. That is Betsy, that's Psylocke. Yup, I know you got a lot of Psylocke fans watching this game, watching, uh, playing the game and watching the, the video. And then we've got uh, Rogue there, and I believe that's her brother. I believe that's Betsy's brother. I could be wrong about that. He doesn't have a mustache. But anyways, I'm not 100% I'm not sure who that is. Anyways, if you guys want a dedicated video for me to read, if you want me to read through Excalibur and give you all of the, you know, uh, like the breakdown of the storyline, give you the synopsis, and then give you all of the potential characters and uniforms that we could get, smash the likes on this video, get it to, let's say, 2,000 likes. If this video hits 2,000 likes in 24 hours, I will immediately read through all of these comics and then make a follow-up video for you. But just to give you the the really short recap here, I don't want to go through the whole story and spoil everything, but, oh, okay, this is the first page. Okay, we have to go and do the whole thing. Okay, so without spoiling everything, I'm just going to scroll quickly through this so you guys can see. Morgan Le Fay is basically at this castle, and she's she's in another world, but she's, she gets tangled up with Krakoa, which is interesting because if you look in the sneak peek, Right, we have Gambit and we have the Awakening. We've got a castle in the background. So that is where a lot of the fans who were who were looking at this and who had read Excalibur immediately made that connection in their head. So huge shout out to you guys for reading the comics and seeing the parallels here. So anyways, how does how does Excalibur and how, how does this team end up crossing crossing paths with Morgan Le Fay and these other characters? And as you can see from the list here, we've got Brian and Betsy Braddock, we've got Jubilee, Apocalypse, Trinary, Rogue, and Gambit. So we go ahead and scroll through, and you're going to see new looks for that Psylocke, by the way. We got the new look for Apocalypse, dripping with swag, dripping with that Egyptian Pharaoh vibe. We've got the new Gambit over here, who looks absolutely amazing. And if we go through, okay, so Kid, Kid Omega and some other people, they do some sort of thing, incantation, and they, they get involved with Morgan Le Fay. So we could be seeing a new uniform potentially for Morgan Le Fay as well. That's, that's how wide this spreads out. So we keep going, keep going, whatever. We see uh, Captain Britain, you know, putting on his new uniform, looks sick. And then, boom, Psylocke. Now, this Psylocke, this version of Psylocke is actually almost identical to the version of Psylocke that we have now from Disassembled. So this is not a new look for her. However, as we will see, she ends up taking on another look altogether. But first, let's appreciate how dope this new Gambit looks. He's got way more pockets now for all of his cards, of course, for his decks and he looks sick and there's a way better picture later on here anyways they end up getting into a fight with morgan Le Fay. we got this really cool shield blocking some fire so you got some sort of medieval action betsy's wielding a sword as well which is pretty dope morgan Le Fay does this like magic stuff and sort of corrupts 
uh, her brother, and he ends up looking absolutely badass, which is dope. So he could come as a new character, and we could get a uniform for him. Anywho, Rogue ends up getting put into this, like, Snow White sleep, but before you do that, take a look at what could potentially be the new uniform for Gambit. That could be the new uniform for Gambit. That looks absolutely sick. He looks swagged out, and that is very different than what we have for him in the game now. If we do a quick little comparison here, obviously the overcoat is similar, but it's not the same because he's got these huge shoulder pads. It's like this these black shoulder pads and it goes down. And then he's got purple underneath instead of this like blue or sort of like crimson blue combo. He looks dope. I got to say, I really like the classic Gambit, but I also think this one looks really dope. Huge shout out to the, to the artists and stuff. They always make Gambit look like a badass. So anyways, obviously Gambit's pissed because of Rogue. And then Betsy on, on her side, on her end of things, she ends up coming back looking like her brother. What? This is such a cool design. So because her brother was sort of corrupted and whatever trapped there, put into a spell. I don't know. Again, I haven't read it yet. But she comes back. She brings a piece of him back, including his helmet. And she's now wearing sort of like a medieval outfit that's a combination of the old stylings with his Captain Britain, you know, colors and color schemes and patterns and stuff like that. She look and the sword, she looks so sick and so medieval. And you know, people made jokes on the stream. Oh, wow, we're getting more characters with swords because we just got Null and he uses the sword and stuff. But you know what? I think the whole medieval vibe for Marvel is dope. I think it's absolutely dope. Flying dragons for Null, flying dragons. That's okay. Anyways, dragons, swords, you know, all that medieval stuff. When you combine it with Marvel, I think it's absolutely amazing. So, yeah, if you want to see a full synopsis and breakdown of whatever is going on here in Excalibur, 2,000 likes, and I will do that absolutely 100%. I'll read all, through all the issues that are available up to now, and then we will find out what's going on with these glowing crystals, what is going on with Betsy, what are her new powers, what could happen, and what might become of Rogue, and Gambit, and Apocalypse, and anyone else, Morgan Le Fay, etc., because I'm guessing the 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 fight don't spoil it in the comments but i'm guessing it's going to come to a climax against uh morgan lefay in some way or another for the fate of you know her brother for the fate of uh psylocke's brother captain britain for the fate of rogue maybe for the fate of something even more uh important so that is the connection and that is the possible connection with this sort of uh castle in the background now it's also possible that the castle could hint towards Dr. Doom. I just want to throw his name out there because I know you guys love Dr. Doom and I would be you know, remiss if I didn't take this opportunity. Obviously, there's very little to do with mutants, X-Men's Krakoa and Dr. Doom, but hey, it's a castle. There's lightning slash magic. That's pretty much up Dr. Doom's alley 100% of the time. And of course, it relates to Morgan Le Fay because she taught him a lot of what he knows so they have a relationship there so you know what if it's not dr doom and it is morgan Le Fay, you're really talking about you know uh whatever six degrees of separation type thing so i'm really liking the spread of this update as far as these last two sneak peeks are concerned i'm also getting pretty excited because there's no apk so we're gonna be going in blind and it's just i don't know it just brings back the old vibes i i do i did like the apk for, for some things the apk was good but the APK also took a lot of the speculation out of it. And it took a lot of the surprise out of it. So now we're going to get all that surprise back, especially if we're not going to be getting a live stream. I don't know if there's a live stream yet. If there would be a live stream, it's probably going to happen in a couple of days because the update should be landing on the 10th. So we're, we're a week away from the update already, which is dope. So yeah, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of Gambit with a potential uniform and a guaranteed awakening. Where is he going to make the biggest splash in the game when he gets his upgrade? And are you going to invest in him? If you are going to invest in him, obviously you are, you want to start playing Danger Room right now because you can grab him uh, here. You can I think you can get five or ten bios, four, four or ten bios right away. But you can get him pretty quickly from Danger Room if you play it and you win and you get your wins. And then you can also get Gambit from the Dimension missions here, I believe, as a support character. So you have multiple ways to get him. He is no longer a sort of like hard paywall character. So get on that. Focus that focus on that if you want to unlock him. My last advice to you as far my last advice for you as far as Gambit goes, however, is don't rank him up. I would say, you know, unless you can afford to use the rank up tickets and unless you can afford to use the materials, 
I would say just unlock him and have him unlocked. And then when the update goes live, if he's really good, then you can consider building him, you know, six starring him, tier twoing him, unlocking his potential and all that stuff. Obviously, if you tier two him now right away, then you can get his aces high potential unlocked, right? And then you don't have to worry about waiting, you know, a few days to a week to unlock his potential if you get unlucky playing him in world boss. However, then you run the risk of him not being that good when he comes out. And then there's some disappointment and some sort of um, wasted resources. But again, you know, I don't think he's I don't think he's going to be bad, but it's really a, a call that you have a decision that you have to make a call that you have to make. So, yeah, there's a little bit of risk involved as, as Gambit would not say. But anyways, you, you get the, it's the card gambling thing. It's, it's like a cringy, corny joke. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I'm pretty hype uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.